Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Xamarin Forms. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. So now, right here I am inside Visual Studio 2017 and I have created a new blank Xamarin Forms application. Now in case you don't know how to do that, you need to go to File, a New, Project and then select Cross Platform Project right here okay then you will be headed to a selection uh, pop-up that will allow you to select a native or a forms application go ahead and select forms and make sure that you select a blank app so you can get the same project that we have here okay so now first thing first i will just uh, walk really quickly uh, for the solution okay first thing first we will have the portable class library now this portable class library will be shared between the android and the ios project okay so you will be defining your uh, uh, xaml pages and your ui in the portable class and also your shared logic up here and then it will be shared among the android and the ios okay so now that was just a really quick uh, overview of the Z uh, Xamarin Forms uh, solution structure. So now let's get deep. Okay. Now, uh, if for every application uh, for Xamarin Forms you create, you will have this app.xaml. Now, the app.xaml, let me expand it, it will be shared among your different views. Okay. And as you notice, uh, it shows that it's the application element and it's shared between your different other XAML pages. Now also it has the app.xaml.cs file. Now this is like if you work with the ASP.NET, uh, like the global SX file, okay? This will have some events that will be really helpful for you, like the on start method that it's handling when your app start, the on sleep, when your app sleep, on resume, that like let's say the user have navigated away from your application okay and he comes back you can handle this event right here using the on receive okay so these are some nice events that you can use now also let me point out for you that we have this property right here it is the main page okay now uh, this property will set the current page that the user sees on his phone okay so the main page you pass in the page that you want so like you can go ahead maybe remove this main page add another different page and in the uh, constructor of the app class you can add the different page that you would like to be navigated to okay so now we have reviewed the app and the app cs okay now uh, let's head more deeper and let's see some ui now as you notice oops let me just go back as you notice we have here that we are stealing the xamarin forms this is my main page which is called my main page and if i go to the xml file for it okay notice with me that we have this declaration that this is a type of a content page okay so we have a declaration of type content page and then we have the namespaces right here for the xml we have also the class okay now inside the content page we have here inside here we will be placing our own elements so notice that we have just like uh, this label right here okay and it has some text and other options that it's uh, like uh, Telling it to go left, go right, vertical, horizontal, it is okay. So, whatever you define for your content page will be between the uh, the beginning and the end of the content page. Now, let me show you also if I come down here and I call in the content page attribute itself. Now, notice with me that we have a dot right here, okay, and notice that I can define different. Uh, let's say uh, attributes uh, for this content page and it will like uh, give it these settings like I can come over here and say content okay instead of me having like I can move this up here ok 
okay let me just order this okay so instead of us just like giving the elements directly to the content page we can call in the content page dot content okay and then inside the content we can place our own xml okay now of course there is not only content like oops let me just come back like if i call in the content okay oops content okay and i will hit tab and notice that i have like different options like i can call in the background color okay and if i hit control and space i can get some elements right here i can say color okay and oops let me just close it and let's call it blue okay so you can here have some different settings and different options for you or for your page okay and it's make it like look much better and much uh, appropriate now this is just maybe this is just like to show you okay the color element might not be uh, defined as this but this, this is just like a small demo okay so now we have seen the xml and notice that we are working uh, purely with xml nothing else okay if i go down and let me just expand the xaml page now notice we have also along with the xaml page we have a xaml.cs just like the app okay it has a xaml and a xaml.cs okay now here here it's like uh, if you work with the aspx pages this is like your code behind page okay now here you can define the events for your page and what will be shown uh, like when uh, or what will happen when uh, the user click a button uh, what will happen when this uh, uh, let's say element uh, appear also you can data bind your uh, uh, your elements right here okay so uh, the main interactions okay uh, will be uh, in the in this file okay and in the xaml page will be just defining the ui all right so now let's explore some uh, events that we can be helpful for us and now uh, before we continue notice that we are inheriting the content page type okay so just make sure you notice this we are inheriting the content page now and of course we are taking it from the xamarin forms all right so now this is the constructor and it's called the initialize component by default okay now also we can come down here and if i type in public uh, override okay oh i'm sorry not public uh, i would like to protect it Pro protected yep protected override now if i hit control and the space i will get some nice uh, intelligence that show us uh, different attributes that we can or i'm sorry different methods that we can call okay uh, and override from the basic class okay so now uh, like we can come over here and override on appearing okay like we can come down here and say display message or display alert okay let's say hello okay typing in one hand so sorry i will be slow typing uh, hello uh, this is uh, first uh, first or this is the main page okay and the cancel i'm gonna say it's okay just like this is the uh, the text for the cancel button so now when when our page appear on the user uh, phone okay uh, this event will be uh, like executed and this alert will be shown now the display alert just uh, an info for you it's available for you with the with all the pages of the xamarin okay so you can like uh, call it and show some nice alerts for your user okay now also we can come down here i'm gonna show you other uh, methods override 
okay like we can uh, notice that we have the on back button pressed like uh, uh, when the user hit the back button when I like maybe block it maybe send it to a different page etc you can also see like a uh, notice on disappearing like we can override that also and like uh, when the page disappear like we might uh, want to clear the forms the fields etc so just come down here say protected override and see whatever different uh, different uh, different uh, methods that you can override and add some nice functionality that you might need in your application okay so let me just remove this and I will just leave this hello message that we will see when we run our own application okay so now we have seen the XAML okay we have seen the page okay now uh, what about like navigation and adding a new page okay so let's head to the solution explorer and I will hit right click I will go to add a new item and make sure you select cross platform from the tab right here and then you see this the forms the blank content page we need to select that and I'm gonna call in the second page okay second page okay so I will hit add and voila we have a new second page all right so now i will come over here now i will do the same thing i'm gonna call in the content page dot content you don't really need to do that but i prefer to do it so i make sure like i know where does the content do go uh, where is my styling go so i really recommend you do the same thing so now i will just add right here actually i will come back to the main page right here I'm gonna copy this label come back to the second page and I will call this is a, or this is the second page okay so we have now just uh, this, is, this is just a label that shows us that this this is the second page okay so when we the user navigate all right he will come over to this second page and see it okay so now let's head back to the main page.cs okay now what i want to do i will actually head to the xaml first okay now what i want to do i would like to add a button so when my user click it or uh, tab it okay i want him to go to the second page so i'm calling here button okay and i will gonna call in this the x okay now the x uh, right here the x attribute okay uh, if you notice that the x represent uh, this class right here okay and we're gonna call in the name the name represent the id of the element okay and it's need to be unique so we cannot have button one button one okay it's need to be unique so now I'm gonna call it button second and uh, now let's add just some text I'm gonna call in the text attribute right here I'm gonna say go to second okay so everything is now let's say in the place we just need to add an event for this button okay so let's hit control and space and what i would like to call i would like to call in the clicked event okay now if you hit tab notice this uh, nice new feature in the visual studio that it still us that it will create a new event handler for us so just hit enter and we have a new event okay so i'm gonna try to hit it f12 on this event and it will take me to it okay so now what we want to do we wanna navigate our user to the second page now i would like to call in the app dot current now there are different way of course to navigate but i i prefer this one app dot current dot uh, main page oops sorry main page okay we're gonna call in a new instance of the second page all right so we have now we are telling that hey 
when you when this uh, button is clicked i want you to send my user to this second page right here okay now before we continue just expand that and go to this yes now now when my user come over here and he hits back all right what i want to do i want to send him to the main page okay now since we have set it that uh, let's say uh, we have set the second page as the main page when the user hit back he will not be sent back to the main page instead what will happen is he will be exiting the application since he's hitting back on the main page so it's like let's exit this application so now what we want to do we want to come down here and we're gonna use protected override and what we're gonna call we're gonna call on back button pressed okay so now we have right here okay what we want to do uh, we want to call in this dot app okay oops sorry actually app okay current and i guess you know what we will gonna set over here main page equal new main page now this is just for the demo okay so you can know this okay so we have our own main page right here up and running okay we have a button that it will send it to the second page right here okay uh, so now let's uh, run the application and let's see what we get on the uh, emulator so right here is the result that we have in uh, our application running on the android device now uh, in case so you know that uh, i'm using this tool it's called mirroring 360 okay and i'm directly connected to my device and i'm running like a remote debugging on it okay and i always recommend it because it's much faster than the android emulator which is take a lot and a lot of time to just load so now this is us uh, this is our application running on the android device and notice that we have this message right here uh, we have a store let me show you that hello this is the main page okay so i'm going to tap okay on my device and notice that we have this label right here and we also have this uh, button that tell us it will go to the second page so i'm going to tap it and we are right here inside our own second page okay so that's uh, everything and that is everything is nice and easy now before we finish this uh, lecture okay or this tutorial if i head back to the main page notice with me that i have the content defined and i also have an extra stack layout element now why is that now uh, in case you like you put uh, or replace a single element inside uh, or uh, a single element inside the content attribute uh, the uh, uh, the xamarin forms might not work correctly so you need to have like a parent element okay and that parent element contain your other elements okay which is in our own case this is the stack layout which is have the uh, label and the button so i hope you enjoy and find this tutorial useful okay please don't forget to like subscribe to this channel thank you